Hey, nice people. So my previous video, which is called Um, Jesus is the name of the pre-Christian green man slash Jupiter of Celts and Swerves, is doing very well. Seems to be getting a positive response. This video is going further. It's saying the Celts must have written the New Testament, and I, I identify them as the Galatian Celts of Turkey that St. Paul wrote letters to. And this is quite obvious. Um, it is quite obvious to anybody uh, who has read Josephus. This is my 170-year-old copy of uh, Josephus, uh, Josephus, complete works of Josephus. And it's anybody who was, uh, it's obvious to anybody who's read this, Josephus was in the Holy Land, that the New Testament, if you read the New Testament after reading Josephus, you see it could have been written by anyone. It, it's not written in the Holy Land at all. So who wrote it? It's in Greek. I think Celtic peoples. And we're going to prove that these Celtic peoples um, made the New Testament, made Jesus similar to their own religion in order for Jesus to be accepted by those around them. And we're going to show that this is a possibility. There's the green man. Essus, possibly he's Essus or Yesha in Central Eastern Europe. He's called Yesha. And when you look at the Jesus story in the New Testament, it's all about not his teachings, because presumably they didn't know what his teachings were. It's basically about ritual wounding. That's what it's all about. It's sacrifice. Who is Jesus being sacrificed to? He's being sacrificed to a God. It's almost like uh, uh, the ancient pagans sacrificing a criminal to the God. They're sacrificing him. It's a ritual. That's what it's all about. And if you look at, uh, so in the Passion of the Christ, it's even putting, uh, he's even being wounded by a tree, wounded by nature, going back into nature. So if you look at, um, if you look at, there's the green man, okay, we, we've seen that. So if you look at uh, Jesus, Jesus, let's make that a, a little bit bigger. It basically says, important god of ancient Gaul. And it says, according to the testimony of Lucian, first century AD, has been challenged as biased against the Gauls. And, okay, uh, he basically portrays uncouth essence of the barbarous altars. Human sacrifices are suspended from trees, like Odin, and ritually wounded. Unnamed priests read omens from which way the blood ran from wounds. Fascinating. Fascinating. Essus. This is the article on Essus. Um, a man with an axe cutting a tree. We're going to see in a second Jesus is a bit like that. A well-known section in Lucan's Bellum Kiv Kivil reveals it refers to gory sacrifices offered to the triad of Celtic deities, two tatters, Hesus, an aspirated form of Essus, and Taranis. Variant spellings or readings of the name Essus in the manuscripts of Lucian include Hesus, Asus, and Hesus. Among a pair of later commentators on Lucan's work, one identifies two tatters with Mercury and Essus with Mars. So he's, he's Mars or he's Jupiter or whatever. According to the Byrne commentary on Lucan, human victims were sacrificed to Essus by being tied to a tree and flogged to death. So it's all about ritual wounding and, and there needs to be some blood. There needs to be lots of blood flowing in order to for this sacrifice to to work the sacrifice to to Hesus in central europe the equivalent is yesha the highest of the gods yasha uh, this was the god in poland it seems i'm just learning this now yesa essa is similar to zeus essus the latin equivalent is jupiter because we're our world is dominated by the romans we haven't heard of this 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 god of the celts and the the slav slash swevs yesha very much, or Essus, we haven't heard about Essus either, have we? We haven't heard much about that. 
if we look at the Estes Art, but it's 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 the equivalent. It, it is basically the equivalent god, the Polish Lakitic god. It says function unknown. We don't know much about it, but it's it's basically the equivalent of Esus. If we look at the Esus article, uh, it's very interesting because um, 18th century Druidic revivalist. Um, now I'm not sure if that's pronounced Yo-Yo Morganug or Lolo Morganug. This is the this is a a great Welsh historian. Um, spoken of by Baron Black and Alan Wilson, identified Essus with Jesus on the strength of the similarity of their names. He also linked them both with Hu Gadan, writing, Both Hu and Huon were no doubt originally identical with the Heus of uh, Lactantius and the Hestus of Lucan, described as gods of the Gauls. The similarity of the last name to Yesu, Welsh Jesus, is obvious and striking. The identification is still made in certain neo-Druidic circles. Modern scholars consider the resemblance between the names Essus and Jesus to be coincidental. We're going to find out. This is far from a coincidence. We are finding this out, aren't we? So it goes uh, further. Essus, Celtic, Lord or Master, powerful Celtic deity, one of three mentioned by the Roman poet Lucan in the first century AD. The other two were Tyrannus, Tutatis, Essus's, uh, by the way, Tutatis, God of the people. No, uh, this is tough, tough knowledge, death. Uh, they're reading it wrongly. Essus's victims, according to later commentators, were sacrificed by being ritually stabbed and hung from trees. Does that sound familiar? Ritually stabbed and then hung from a tree. That's a crucifixion. Do you see what's happening here? This is incredible. Um a relief uh, in the Notre Dame in Paris uh, portrays him as a, as a bent woodman cutting a branch from a willow tree. Uh, fascinating, fascinating, fascinating. So the thing is, in the New Testament, Jesus talks a lot about trees. Yeah. Parable of the barren fig tree. So uh, it, does Jesus have an axe? Well, when he told this parable, a man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, see here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should I be wasting the soil? He replied, sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, it is good. But if not, you can cut it down. Huh. So uh, Jesus talks a lot about trees, growth, new life. Uh, in the New Testament. And, he came, uh, and, and look at the fig tree, all the trees. As soon as they come out in leaf, you see for yourselves and know that the summer is already near. So he's like a spring god. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I say to you, this generation will not pass away till all has taken place. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words will not pass away. Parable of the sower. Uh, it goes on and on. Parable of the mustard seed. It's all about growth and growing and seeds and springtime. I get the feeling that um, Jesus may have spoken of these topics, but I get the feeling the writers of the New Testament, never having known Jesus, and it's assumed they didn't know Jesus, it's uh, they're written in Greek, uh, not really a language of, of the Holy Land. It was a language of the Holy Land in official circles. Uh, but not really a common language of the Holy Land. You have to ask the question, uh, have they, not knowing much about Jesus, written him up as a sacrificial victim to Yasha slash Esus, uh, or, or, or that, uh, in a way, that God himself, since he's the son of that God? This is incredible. Now, so who could have written the New Testament based on all this information, based on the fact they were trying to make Jesus a sacrificial victim to Yasha slash Esus? And uh, so, so we can look at the other Christians from the letters written by Paul, which survive. He wrote a letter to the church at Rome. So there's, a, there's, a, there's, there's Latin people, okay? But Esus Yasha is not a Latin god. So he wrote to Corinth in Greece. He wrote to Galatia, boom, Celts, right? A letter to the Galatians. He wrote a letter to Ephesus, Ephesus, Turkey. They, they could be, it's an ancient Greek city in Ionia. Yes, it's on the on the, on the the Turkish coast now. Um, yes, it could be. Uh, they, they, they could have could have been Celts there, but it's a Greek city. 
Church at Philippi, um, again, that's, that's a Greek city. Church at Colossae, again, uh, Greeks, Anatolia. Southern Anatolia, uh, it could, uh, it's in Phrygia, yes, they, 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 they could have, they could have, it could be Celts there. Church at Thessalonica, uh, and then to, to, to a couple of saints. And he also wrote to the Hebrew Christians, um, presumably in the Holy Land. So do you see, uh, the early Christians uh, in the time of St. Paul, we're talking, what, when did he live? 60s, 70s AD, he flourished. So basically, the Christians are in the Holy Land, they're in Greece, they're in Turkey. And if they're in Turkey, they can be Celts, such as the Galatia, Celt, the, the, this Galatian land, the Galatians living right here in the center, um, Phrygia right there, Celtic dominated, Celtic gods, Yasa. These could be the people who I believe may well have written the New Testament based on the desire to convert their fellow peoples worshipping Celtic gods to the Christian religion. That is my deduction based on the evidence. What do you think?